Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be going over a more intuitive way to change certain attributes of textures inside the viewport using Cinema 4D, obviously, and then Redshift as well. So let's go ahead and drop in a plane and I can kind of show you better more what I mean here. We're going to go ahead and drop on this texture. I just have a texture set up here if I open it up. It's just a sand, cracked sand material, but it's you know super simple setup with a texture, a normal map, and then displacement. And then it's all piped in through like you normally would in Redshift. Now we're going to make this plane a Redshift object as well. That way we can use our displacement. So I'll go ahead and head over to the Geometry tab and then enable Tessellation and Displacement. I'm going to set this maximum displacement to 5. That will allow us to have a little bit more displacement in our texture here. So you can use this with any sort of texture that you have that you want and it's not really specific but we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a null. So we'll go ahead and create an object then null. Now we're going to be parenting that to the plane here and we're going to be using this null to drive this offset u and the offset v here so that you can use the null and just move the null around and it will change both of the offsets there and you won't have to do it through this texture tag as well as it's going to drive our displacement. Now we're going to start off with the offset. So let's go ahead and open up our redshift shader graph. So if you don't know, this shader graph is actually just an Expresso uh, like kind of like scripting place. <laughs> so if you were to right click and add a symbol 40 tag and then the Expresso tag and where did that go? Oh, there it is. So it's the same thing. You can do all the same stuff in here uh, as you can in here. You can't, I don't know if you can texture stuff in through that through the Expresso thing, but you can do all of the Expresso stuff in the shader graph. So we're going to be using that to drive all of this information. So Drag your null in there because we're going to need that. You can go ahead and delete that tag as well. And then drag your texture tag into there as well. So we're going to be using the nulls coordinates and then it's global position X and it's global position Z to drive our offsets. So go ahead and right click on the null and then click optimize. And then we're going to pipe these on into, if I can get a hold of it, right into our tag properties and then offset U and then offset V. So now if I go back into our view here and I click on our null, you can see as I drag this around, it's changing the offset of our texture. Now it's moving insanely quickly and we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and change that. So let's go ahead and right click, add a new node, Expresso, and then we're going to need a calculate and then cross product. We're actually going to need two of these, so I'm going to copy and paste. And then we're also going to need an Espresso general and then constant. Now we're going to set this constant to a vector because these positions are set in a three value system, so, you know, x, y, and z. And then we're going to need a second one of these as well, so just copy and paste that. Now let's set our global position as our input input 1. And then our Z for input one of the other one. And then our constant, we're going to go ahead and drag that into our input two and our input two. And then let's drag our Z to the offset B and then our X to the offset U. So right away, this isn't going to do anything. So we're going to need to change some of these values. Now a good value that I've found for my personal taste is 0 0.01. Now for the X, you kind of have to play around with these because sometimes these values where you have to put them changes for whatever reason that what I've found, what I've found is they just kind of switch positions randomly. I don't know really why that happens, but if I put that value in there and I drag this, you see it's moving a lot slower compared to this one, which is not moving at all because this value is set to zero. So let's, I don't know which one this one is. Let's go ahead and set them all to one and see what happens. So 
you can see that nothing is happening again. Like I said, got to play around with it a little bit. I think if they're all set to the same thing, they won't do anything. Yeah. So you can see this one's still flying around really heavy, but this one was moving a lot slower, a lot more reasonable. So let's go ahead and set this other constant to set this one to zero and then one to zero one and see if that gives us our desired result, which it does. So now as I drag this around, you can see that it doesn't matter which way I drag it. It's just changing the offset, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, just curious here for my own personal knowledge. I'm going to set that and see if that changes that. So it does, I guess it doesn't matter as long as one of them is set to the correct number. So you see it's giving us the the correct you know change that we want. That way it's not flying all over the place. It's moving nice and slow. We can have really nice control over all of that. If I bring in my Redshift render view, which I just have off screen here, you can see as I move this around, it's moving and updating in our render view as well. Let's go ahead and set that back. Now we're gonna want to set this same sort of setup for our displacement as well. So for this, we're going to use the null again, and let's go ahead and drag this up. For this, we want the global position Y because let me optimize this. As we drag this up, we want the, the, the displacement scale to change for the object tag. So we want the drag in this redshift object tag, and we want to use our position Y as our see where is it at our geometry displacement and then our not our maximum displacement but our displacement scale but we are going to want another cross product in here and a, another constant so let's go ahead and bring both of those in if i set this to our input one and then this one should be point go with point zero one again and we'll set this to this. Now you are going to have to have your, or want your render view set up to, uh, to show you this. Now, because the value is currently set to zero, it's gonna look really weird. So you wanna avoid having it set to zero. Maybe set up a, you know, a question in your, in your graph here to say, if it's zero, set it to like, 0 0.01 or something like that. But as I drag this up, you can see our displacement. That's actually, it's not what I wanted. If I look at this displacement here, you can see, if I drag this up, our scale is gonna go up as well. And if I actually click on our tag here, you can see our displacement scale is going up with how much I drag this up. Now you can set this up to maybe a higher value. Let's go with a 0 0.05. So you can see now for sure, you can see it's got a lot more displacement in the texture. As I drag it down, you can see that it's going to lower the displacement quite a bit. So giving us the correct value, if I actually just go ahead and drop in, let's go with a, let's go, let's actually go up to Redshift and bring in a Sun and Sky Rig. So this will give us nice shadows and stuff. So as I drag this up, you can see our cracks are becoming way more visible and apparent. If I zoom in a bunch here, you can see it's definitely looking a lot more like it's being displaced. As I drag this down, it's slowly creeping back down to not very displaced at all. But if you go in the negative direction, as you see, it started going in the negative direction. As I'm getting below there, it's also, you know, bringing us up in value. So just be aware of that. So don't you don't want to set this nulls value. I bring that back up. 
you don't want to set this nulls value down to zero and the y because it's going to look super weird like that but anything above that even if it's 0.01 you know it looks like normal again so just avoid having it set to zero but this is how you would set up a null to control your offset and now if i if you see as i drag this like this as well it's changing the offset keeping the amount of displacement that you want just make sure that you're not moving it in all three directions you know so super quick and simple to set up and it's definitely something that's very useful for uh, for kind of art directing your scenes a little bit if you want to have a better control over your displacement and your offset and stuff like that this is how you would set that up so hopefully this was a little kind of insight in how you can do something something cool inside of the shader graph and hopefully you figured out that you can use this as an espresso uh, your shader graph as an espresso kind of uh, scripting area as well so Thank you guys for watching and leave a comment if you have any questions. I can hopefully help you out and uh, subscribe if you want to have any more, you know, quick tips. I have a bunch more on my channel. You can see all of those if you go and look as well as you can see upcoming videos as well. I've got a bunch more tips coming, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. But thank you for watching and have a good day.